50 years old female patient without concomitant conditions, con conditions. Uh, 2018 survived spontaneous uh, subarachnoidal hemorrhage. Small blister-like aneurysm was found on internal carotid artery. Next year, uh, it was followed through the repetitive imaging. Uh, in the last imaging, a slight dimension increase uh, was registered. Uh, last month, she received small rebleed with light headache. Uh, we took decision for intervention uh, after vascular spasm resolution. Uh, situ angular images, uh, small aneurysm. Uh, different angle views and uh, DSA. So, Dr. Olewski is, is next. Okay, hi guys from the Audis. Uh, I'm Dr. Olewski from St. Anna Hospital. By to me is uh, Mikhail Petrov from uh, Pyrogov and from neurology department is uh, Teddy Sikalarova. Uh, I can show you my work from CAT lab till now. We are from with the right femoral approach with six French distal access catheter uh, and boy distal access catheter. We do 3D angiography and after that, we are with a, with a penon and a vigo into the middle cerebral artery. I can discuss about the solution to treat this aneurysm. First of all, it's uh, maybe just coiling. Second one, it's a balloon remodeling or stent lamp remodeling technique. But if you see in the, on 3D images, we see that this aneurysm actually is a bike aneurysm and from the fungus of aneurysm, it started the uh, PCOM. And for this reason, we decide to put the flow diverter. I'm now into the uh, M1 segment with uh, phenom. And after that, we, we will use flow diverter pipeline shield technique. Four, four, four point five. Four point five. Four point five to sixteen. Now I I wait for to, to washing the the system and mm -hmm. now we are ready to to put the flow diverter. Can you tell us whether what antiplatelet regime you use and whether you test for efficiency? Yes. Of course that we are test. Uh, we uh, the patient is on the clopidogrel and aspirin, and in regular we tested every patient before the placement of stand. Because that we we all know that we have a. a 20% of resistance of the top of the well. Now. Here is the stand. It is the resheatable stand. We can resheat it if we need to have a better placement of the stand. Now I think that it's much, much better. 
but it's not still open it. I will wait a couple of seconds and to do a massage of the stand. Come on. Now I think that it's open. Now it's much, much better. The stand is a little bit longer. Okay, now it's fully open. Okay, I will place it now. Okay, it's open. Okay. Here is the capture curl of the stand. Oh. Sorry. For any case, it's okay to stay with a micro catheter in below to the stand because if you need to put telescopic uh, uh, way second device, it's okay to have a approach. Control and here. Okay. We can do. We will do three uh, D angiography. I can show you the play. Oh, it's here is the stand. Okay, let's do the 3D. If there are any questions from, from the audience, we are able to, to answer. Please welcome. more to not put any coils in beforehand uh, did you want to preserve the PCOM or um, what was the rationale did you say you explained it earlier on uh, actually uh, the, from the from the fungus of the aneurysm it's become PICOM and if we put the coils we will occult PICOM okay this is the reason main mm -hmm. reason why we, we why we choose flow diverter Fantastic. And probably could you explain to the audience um, uh, now the different grading? It's not like the Raymond Roy scale for an aneurysm to be occluded with coils. We expect not to see anything with flow diverters. This is different. Um, how is your follow-up? Do you do MR imaging regarding looking if the aneurysm occludes over time? To the for the first year, we prefer uh, to do tricks tri 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 protocol or with MRI angiography, and on the first year we do we do conventional angiography. Of course, that uh, 
conventional angiography, it's the best way to, to see the shrinking of the aneurysm and to see the flow into the uh, parent vessel. But for the first follow-up, we prefer to do uh, MRI. Yes, MRI with contrast is the best um, way of doing that here because um, it is the only way to see if there's real shrinkage in the DSA angio. We are often misled. There's thrombus formation, some thrombus formation inside. Um, uh, and again, it is very important in the MR. We often see the arterial phase. So with the aneurysms that we treat with a flow diverter, what we want to avoid is that there's still a jet inflow because sometimes, especially in the large aneurysms, the only thing that holds the aneurysm together, there isn't even an elastica wall anymore, but it is just the thrombus. So if you now shift the flow that goes in, suddenly, because of the pressure, the thrombus disappears, and then we have this terrible complication of a late rupture, a day later, two days later. So what we have to avoid in the arterial phase to see if there's a jet inflow where we can see it, and we're actually looking at those, an at those aneurysms not in the conventional way, but in the venous phase. And the best follow-up to really see if there's something is with the MR in these cases, okay. whereas the other gold standard in our conventional aneurysms would be the DSA. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Also so it means we do not need to be worried if we still see aneurysm. Of course. Uh, in regular, we, we oh. put a couple of pearls in giant uh, aneurysm uh, to avoid delayed rupture. But in, any, uh, in this case, it's not necessary to put something because the aneurysm uh, is small, but she has a second bleeding before to, to three weeks, I think. And this is the main reason for the treatment. Would you ever consider coiling first and then putting an additional um, uh, flow diverter or stent? Of course, that in the acute phase, I would prefer to do it, uh, to do uh, mm -hmm. uh, only coiling, and after that to, to discuss about the uh, treatment with flow diverter or something else. But first choice policy uh, for our case is. Uh, uh, and would you tell the audience something about the technique of deploying the flow diverter, push and pull technique, you were talking about massaging, um, so it's completely different to deploying a conventional intracranial stent. Would you tell us something about that technique? Uh, this technique is to, to, to have a good... Uh, Actually, uh, on the uh, control 3D angio, we will see the stagnation on, on the aneurysm, uh, if it's possible to see. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the massage of the, of the stents we do to, to have a, a, big, a little bit bigger density of the, of the stent uh, uh, below to the aneurysm. And this is the reason to do it. Uh, how can I say, massage of the stand to, to, to have a, a good opening and to have a little bit big, more density of the struts to the aneurysm. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I do the massage of the stand. Thank you. And I would be very interested to see a venous phase. Sorry, I don't uh, but hear. To the, an, in, I would be very interested to see an injection which shows ah. us the venous phase, where hopefully we will see stagnation already of contrast. I see on 3D because no. I, 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 I'm already out from the uh, uh, intracranial approach. Sorry. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Perfect. Very, very nice case. Um, is this the only aneurysm? And um, what triggered the treatment now? No, she, she will be awake. Uh, it, uh, she will be. Uh, she will go in ICU for yes. 24 hours, and after that in the in our neurosurgical uh, department. Fantastic. And um, at the beginning, you showed us that the aneurysm. 
um, was uh, two by two. When it first ruptured, it was about two by two millimeters, and it had then been seen as three by three millimeters. Is that what triggered the decision to now go for treatment, the change? Do you treat aneurysms when they change their shape? Uh, Is that yes, a trigger? But in this, in this particular case, the, uh, the, 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 uh, she, she have a, a new bleeding before three, three weeks. Oh, this I is see. the main reason for the treatment. In, in regular, I don't treat small aneurysms. I, 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 I follow up the patient and if we have a grind of the aneurysm, and after that we decide to, to treat it. Great. Thank you very much. We can probably then in the aneurysm session also talk about which aneurysms are more likely to rupture and vessel wall imaging. But I think this was a really good case. You did the procedure in general anesthesia, which, yes. which I personally believe is very important for any intracranial complex procedures. Um, because if something happened, we do want the patient to stay still here um, and to not lose access. Um, you also had the possibility, if you had needed to go distally or if there had been an occlusion, um, to still keep the access. I think that's the main point in these procedures, um, so that we would be able to pass the stent again to deal with anything that happens more distally, or in some cases, if a second flow diverter would need to be placed. Excellent, very nice. Iris, yes? sorry. Uh, now we will have uh, an, uh, another one case yes. uh, after one hour, and yes. I will show the uh, uh, recognized aneurysm uh, that it's treated before uh, oh, it's cool. two years, two years. Yeah. and now we will plan to, to put uh, the whole the device. They want to show it now? No, another case. In one hour. Okay. In one hour. Okay. And we can so discuss the okay. next patient after one hour. But, well, thank you very much. It would be interesting. Okay. <laughs> thank you Bye. very much. Well done. Bye. <laughs>